Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream. And today we've got a bit of a skills cast session for beginners out there who are looking to model steam trains on the main line in the 21st century. This is something that does seem a little bit at odds and ends. Surely, if you want a classic steam locomotive, you want to model it in the heyday of steam in the 1930s, 40s and 50s in some of the BR and Big Four railway companies out there. However, there's some great opportunities to model the growing scene of locomotives such as these that I have on my workbench here today out there alongside more modern diesel and electric trains running on the main line across the UK. It's certainly something we've seen on the UK since 1971 and more and more of these mainline steam hauled services are running now than ever has been before. So you can see them quite often across the UK in many different places, sometimes working through the Highlands on scheduled mainline services such as the Jacobite from Fort William to Malague. You can see designated dining services such as the British Pullman heading out of London. And of course, you can see one-off rail tours for enthusiasts and the general public alike working to various different destinations across the UK. So there is a growing amount of locomotives that's on this now but they do have their differences in modeling the railways from the classic steam era, the su subtle differences between the different fittings on the locomotive, the different requirements they have to work on the main line, the different formations that they will pull to. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a basic overview of modeling one of these classic steam locomotives alongside your 21st century diesel collection. If you want to have a look at the link in the description, I've put a link in there for all the locomotives we have that are applicable for mainline rail tours currently that sit in eras 9, 10 and 11. So that's everything from the mid 1990s right through to the current day. You can check those out in a variety of scales. Of course, a lot of locomotives sold outside these eras, so sold for the 1930s and 1940s, are applicable for rail tours too. But with some quick modifications, you can change them over to make them entirely appropriate for your layout. So let's have a look at a rail tour. Let's have a look at a pretty standard rake, as we see here on the screen now. This is the new build locomotive, the Peppercorn Class A1. Tornado, which was completed in 2008 and has been a regular feature on the main line ever since. Now, straight away, it looks like it heads right out of the 1950s here. A classic steam locomotive, Pacific design on a large rake of Mark I coaches. Now, once you start looking a little bit closer, you start to see some of the differences that make this a more modern photo. First of all, we have the electronic LED lighting on the front of the loco. A lot of these now have these fitted, but some do carry separate headlamps, which we will get on to shortly. This is a requirement of services that work on the main line. Now you can no longer just have the oil lamps that were used in the British Rail and Big Four era. You do need a far brighter headlight for these locomotives to operate. So that's something we can look at fitting to our locomotive. Heading back to the image, you'll also see just under the buffer beam there that there is a red and a yellow socket and two pipes coming out of that. That is the locomotive's air braking system. It does have the standard vacuum brakes, as you can see, just protruding from above the buffer there. But most locomotives now working on the main line do have the more modern air brake system on them. This complies with a lot more of the coaching stock that runs on the UK's rail tours and, of course, makes the locomotives easier to rescue. If they do break down, you can rescue them by one of the many air brake diesel locomotives out there on the network. Plus, it is viewed as a more safe system on the 21st century UK network too. So have a look at some different locomotives and you will find that the majority do have the air brakes fitted for working on the UK's railway network. A very small amount do still only have the vacuum brake system, but this is a figure that gets less and less each year. So do stick with the air brake system and keep an eye out for that on your chosen locomotive. So with rail tour rakes, you're generally looking at either very long or very short, really. To make the profit from running the rail tours, it's very uneconomical to run a short rail tour rake. So rarely do you see anything between sort of one and 
eight coaches really the generally the larger rakes and because of that we generally see the larger locomotives out on rail tour duty too anything from the 460 or 462 wheel arrangements is pretty appropriate as we've got today we've got 6023 which is a gwr king class we have of course flying scotsman the famous a3 locomotive preserved by the national railway museum and another mainline locomotive used on the main line very recently is oliver cromwell the britannia class there so although you have seen some very small locomotives they are few and far between tisley depot the company called vintage trains operates a very small fleet of pannier tanks on the main line which they put on special excursions but this really is it's not really the rule, you do get the larger locomotives as you see here generally. So heading back to that rake, as you can see, we've got the length of the rake. Once you start looking closely, you will see that it is quite a uniform rake of stock and you do generally find this on the steam rail tours, dependent on the operator that you will get either one or just two colors of different Mark 1s in the rake. I would recommend having a look at the different operators and doing some research into the particular colors but generally either maroon or crimson and cream mark ones as you can see here are appropriate again these will be fitted with the air braking system if appropriate and also you will see that some of them do have the more modern bogies affixed to them than they would have carried in the 1950s finally at the back we can see two of the mark ii coaches these are mainly put on the rear of trains, certainly in the 2000s, because they are more crash worthy than the Mark 1s. They're a little bit more safe than the Mark 1 design. So having these at the back does increase the safety of the train in case, unfortunately, anything ran into the back of it, which I don't think has happened yet, but it is there as a safety measure. So you can combine some of those early Mark 2 coaches into your steam charter rake too. Let's have a close look at some of the locos then. So we've seen the three we've got here today, and we've already had a few mentions in the chat of some different designs. There are several out there on the UK's railway network. I believe there's around 30 or so locomotives currently authorized to run on the mainline railways in the UK. If we look at this Merchant Navy Pacific here, owned by West Coast Railways, we'll see some of those modifications that we've just discussed, and a few more here too. But most importantly for this first picture, where's the rest of the train? There's only one Mark 1 here, and one or two of you have answered this in the chat already. Locomotives, when being moved across the network, won't generally run on their own. They will run with a single Mark 1 coach, often, well, pretty much always, a brake vehicle that has been fitted out with beds and also facilities for the locomotive crew. This is known as a support coach, generally a Mark 1 brake vehicle, as I've got here in front of me today, converted with sleeping accommodation and other requirements to fit there. So you'll see these when the locomotives are being moved around the country to perform their different duties on the rail tours. Very rarely will the locomotives actually take the full train from the depots themselves. This is generally carried out by diesel locomotives who bring the stock separately to the start of the rail tour, the place where it starts off, and then the locomotive will head there on its own with a support coach. And this is something that you can model very easily with either a Mark 1 or a Mark 2 brake, as you see here with this Black 5 locomotive out there on the main line too. This is something that's easy to squeeze onto any modern image layout. And if you're just having a locomotive passing through on its way to work a rail tour, you can add this. If you don't want to have a full rake of Mark 1s or if you don't have a full rake of Mark 1s or Mark 2 coaches, you can simply put a locomotive on a support coach as you see there. Let's head back over to our Merchant Navy. And you can see some of those differences again. The eagle-eyed viewers will have already spotted, but I'll point them out too. On the right-hand lower side of the buffer beam, you will see the air brake pipes that we mentioned previously on the Tornado locomotive, just hanging down below the buffer beam there. Between the two headlamps, it might be quite tricky to make out, but you can see a third black headlamp too. This is the high-intensity headlamp. So this is the brighter light that is a requirement to put on the front of steam locomotives when out running on the network. You can pick these up. We do have them available as working or cosmetic lamps from the DCC Concepts range. And again, you can find out a little bit more info on those in the link in the description on how to wire them up and how to affix them to your models. 
we'll pop back over to our black fi for a second and again you can see some of those details there you can see the air brake pipes hanging down from underneath the vacuum brake pipe you'll also see just in above the left buffer one of the modern safety warning signs which are now attached to locomotives advising that in most locations as you can see here appropriately there are overhead live wires above the locomotive so it's not permitted to climb on top of the locomotive whilst it is under these wires to carry out any work or refuel the locomotive etc etc these signs changed in around 1998 and you'll see all the locomotives that do run out on the main line do have these attached so if you're putting a locomotive out onto your main line, you do need to attach these warning signs onto it. You can pick them up as transfers from various different suppliers out there, such as box transfers or other suppliers are available too. If you're looking for inspiration on locomotives, you can search online for mainline steam and then put the year if you're looking for the certain year. But as said, it is mainly larger locomotives as we see here with new build locomotives coming onto the network too. A great opportunity may be the recently announced Hornby P2, especially this version, which is going to be the new build locomotive, which will appear on the main lines in the UK from 2022. So there's some great opportunities there to add them on. And of course, as Trevor's mentioned there too, you can use the new Hornby Mark 1 BSBCK in various different liveries, which will act as a support coach. But there's quite a few different Mark 1s out there in different colours and guises. So have a look at what we have available now. But most important, surely, is the headboard on the locomotive. You can see this above the number on front of Tornado here, designating the train's title and bringing back some of the memories of trains of yesteryear. These really do enhance the style of the locomotive and, of course, add a little bit of prestige to the different operations too. And I thought I'd get my modeling tools out today and show you just how easy it is to add one of these temporarily to your model. So I have my headboard here. I'll just head over to the small camera there and we'll put a headboard on the front of our Oliver Cromwell locomotive. So first of all, we'll get it securely in our loco cradle. And I do recommend these if you're carrying out any detailing or putting further parts. If I was making this into full mainline condition, as said, I would be putting the air brake pipes and the vacuum pipes onto this locomotive. But just for a very quick demonstration today, we'll put a headboard onto this loco. You can pick these up again from various different suppliers. They do come as part of some steam train packs and they do come as part of various different other sets too. I'll just make sure I can pick that up. So today I have this Manxman headboard, which is our chosen rail tour name. This is just a small piece of plastic today, but you can get these in etched brass and other methods. So referring back to that photo we saw on the screen there, it gives us a great idea of where this headboard would be positioned, generally towards the top of the boiler, as we can see there on our screen. So I'm gonna be attaching this temporarily with just a bit of trusty gray tack you can, of course, attach these permanently with glue if you wish, but Grey Tack will do us today. Unfortunately, because they are quite small, they do sometimes ping off the tweezers too. So just putting that onto that top bracket there with a bit of Grey Tack, probably used quite a bit too much for the purposes of today. So you can see there, I should have really used quite a smaller amount, but you do still get the effect of adding this on to the locomotive, just making sure it goes on the top of that bracket, making sure it's aligned correctly and on there too. So if you are doing that for yourself temporarily, make sure you use a lot less gray tack than I have here. If you're putting it on permanently, have a look at some of the other videos that we have produced on some of our recommendations on how to use glue and adding plastic parts to your locos. But you can see there now this train has a full title on the front of it as per the Tornado locomotive that you see here. And you can pick up a huge variety of those different headboards from various different suppliers online. So I do recommend having a bit of a Google and indeed looking through our website for more information there. But it's a great way to get some of the classic locomotives onto our web 
onto the railways that you already have. You can feature some of these locos alongside the most modern of diesel and electric traction, including the Pendolinos and all the other trains that run across the UK's network. Although we've seen a little less of these during 2020 and 2021, they're certain to return to our network as soon as they can do and form a popular part of the UK's tourist industry and providing great days out for us enthusiasts too. But if you are looking at modeling them authentically, just make note of some of those differences on the particular locomotives, whether you're modeling such a support train as we see here, and we see here again with this Merchant Navy locomotive, or you're modeling a full rail tour rake as you see here again being hauled by Tornado. I'd recommend doing some research, but of course, if you'd like to know anything more or you have any particular questions, don't hesitate to put a comment on the video or get in touch with our customer experience team. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's opened the door for you, potentially modeling some fantastic rail tours on your layout and getting some of the UK's best preserved steam locomotives running alongside your modern locomotive fleet. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And of course, like our Facebook page for all the latest model railway news too, and all the latest model railway videos that we are producing also. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.